welcome to First United Methodist Church this morning. My name is Rachel. I'm one of the pastors here, along with Pastor Mark. We welcome you to our worship service this morning. We're talking about Christmas, surprise, all month, and we're kind of going through different colors. So last week we did a blue Christmas, and we talked a little bit about what are some of the things that make us blue around Christmas time, and sometimes that's the loss of somebody, you're missing somebody, um, or as we talked with the kids about getting a present that you didn't really want, right? Today we're talking about green Christmas. Where is there new life at Christmas time? We talk about a little one born in a manger. We talk about new life in so many different ways. So green Christmas today. We're glad that you're here with us. A couple housekeeping bits. Uh, in your pews, you will see red books. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, just let us know that you're here. Uh, if you have an updated address, email address, phone number, you can change that in here so we can stay in touch with you. Um, also, in your pews, you'll see prayer cards. Uh, if you would like a joy or a concern lifted up later in the service, you can jot something down here. You can keep it simple, um, and we will lift that up in prayer later. If you would like a prayer letter written to somebody who could use uh, an uplifting letter, uh, you can put their information on the back, and prayer letters will be written, and you can sign those in the back of the sanctuary at the end of the service. So please uh, participate in that. I'll come and collect those during our opening hymn. So with that, let us turn to that. The opening hymn is Break Forth, O Beauteous Heavenly Light. Mark tells me that this is a working hymn, which means we're going to work some through this hymn, and we may all be a little tired by the end of it. There's sometimes those are the kinds of hymns we need to wake us up a little bit in the morning. So let us wake up with the beauteous heavenly light of morning, shall we? Let us pray. Let us bring our gifts to our, Let us bring our worship to God. I'm tired. We had youth overnight last night. Forgive me. <laughs>
Good morning. Um, in your hymnal on page uh, 201, and I believe on the screen as well, we will have a prayer for Advent, and this will be read in unison. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings for the sake of our sins, that we may celebrate aright the commemoration of the Nativity and may await with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. there are any children who would like to come forward, you can come down and maybe sit right here. You don't have to come, but if you'd like to come, come sit over here. We're going to talk about life. Have a seat right there, please. Rachel, can you just do me a quick favor and grab one end of this table and help me? I'm going to move it over here. Have a seat right there. Thanks so much. Right here is good. Okay. And let's move this. Now, that's good. Okay. Can you see? No. <laughs> okay, you can see this though. We're talking about life. How do you spell life? L I F E. Some languages have more than one word for life. And so we get, we have a word biology. Do you know that word? If you don't know it, you will. Biology. And we usually think about, you know, physical life or cellular life. Uh, but we talk about life life, but s some languages have different words for life. Bio. We're going to talk about um, life. Mm. Do you ever wake up in the morning with really good breath? No. Of course not. No. Toothbrush. Maybe not for you, but for anybody who's got to talk with you. Toothbrush. Really good thing to have. Did you brush it? Never mind. I brushed my teeth this morning, just so you know. Toothbrush. I know... I mean, different ones of us. Sometimes when I wake up in the morning, my hair looks like I stuck my finger into a light socket. My hair's Me all too. over the place. Does that happen to you? Yeah. Okay. That's why we have combs. When we comb our hair, it, you don't like combing your like hair. How can you not? I like brushing my hair. I don't you, like combs. You I like, like brushing it though. It hurts my face and so I like You have a very sensitive I scalp. I am so hair. sorry, Nora. A sen did you know? Did you know this? Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Soap. Anybody use soap today? Yeah. Please, please say yes. So you don't use soap in the morning, just what about at night. Just washing your hands. Yes. Oh, I don't want. I don't. I don't know if I want to get like too deep into some of this stuff. Okay. Nail clippers. I don't, I don't, so I don't use. I play the guitar, and in order to play the guitar, you gotta cut your nails. I play the piano, you gotta cut your nails. Oh, I love, what's this? A towel. No. To so dry your hands off. It's a washcloth. Handkerchief. What, Catherine? Coyote All right. What about, what about this? Bandage. You ever cut yourself? Who says no? Who said no? Who said, did, you, did you say no? You never cut yourself? You never had a bandage? Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is right here? This is a hygiene kit. Do you know what this is right here? It's a plant! I bought this plant, what, seven years ago maybe? And I've killed it so many times. Well, not on purpose. But I am so grateful for Mrs. Purvey because Mrs. Purvey takes this plant every week. I think she sings to it. Um, she makes sure it has water. And look at this. Look at these beautiful blossoms. Uh, Mrs. Purvey does for this. Oh, and here's another one coming. Another blossom here. Mrs. Purvey has done so much to keep 
this plant not just alive, but healthy, green and blossoming. This is life. This is life. Henry, would you do me a favor? Come to the other side of the table and just help me for a minute. I need you to help me fold this up. When you're clean, it feels good. So Henry, we're going to put stuff in the middle like this. The band-aid's in the middle like that and this. Now take that in and fold it up like this. Please. Thank you. Good. And then take this in, fold it up like this. And then we're going to fold this in here like that. Like that. Thank you. And now, Henry, one more thing for you to do. Would you hold the bag open for me, please? I got to do this. Well, then it wouldn't be organized. Okay. Wouldn't it be easier to just get a box? Hang on. I'm just following the instructions for the hygiene kit. For the hygiene kit. Yes, there's instructions for how to do it. For Umcor, it says. It says, please put two $1 bills. What? 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 You're paying these people money. Please put... And you're giving them money? <laughs> no, that's for oh. Please put two $1 bills. You know why? $1 to help for the shipping. And $2. And $1 to buy toothpaste. Because we they don't want the toothpaste in there just now. And I don't know... And then it says to please seal the bag. I'm going to seal the bag. Are you going to give it to someone? Who are you giving it to? Why are you giving them money if you're giving them something? Catherine, can I give this to you, please? This is life. Somebody, I don't know who, somebody will get this, and when they do, they're going to be really grateful. Just like I'm grateful for Mrs. Purvey taking care of this plant. And right now, Ruby, I need... Ah, excuse me. Would you light this, please, from up there? Careful, careful, careful. Right up there, go ahead, right up there. That's okay, I'm asking to do it again. Oh, okay, thank you, good for you. Yes, do it, do it. Okay. And Luca, I'm going to ask you to light two of the purple candles, please. Me too. What are you doing? Me too. Light. No, it's too old. Light. Me, not light. We both light. Two purples and a pink. Catherine, do not think the fire on the tree. It doesn't do it. One. Good. Yep. Put it out. And give that to me, please. Here, I'll take it from here. Thank you. And let's say a prayer together. Lord, let these candles remind us of your life with us and within us. Let these candles remind us to be generous, to do things for others that help them to know you love them, that your spirit is alive in them. Thank you for the people who tend the plants and who tend to us. And thank you for the opportunities we have to celebrate your life with us and to share it with others. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks. You can go to Sunday. <laughs>
Our reading this morning from the Old Testament is from Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of a field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up, 
get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings? Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. And thus end us the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now on page 806 of your hymn book, would you please join me reading responsibly Psalm 85. Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God will speak, for the Lord will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord and make God's footsteps away. And then our final reading on 103 and on the board um, is from John 10, 7 through 10. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep will not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Here endeth the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. And are we yet alive and see each other's face? Glory and thanks to Jesus give for his almighty grace. Hymn number 553, written by Charles Wesley sometime during the year of 1749. And Several years later, around 1780, his brother John Wesley, often called the father of Methodism, took that hymn and sang it at the beginning of the annual gathering of the Methodist preachers. And since that time, every year, in not all but in many of the United Methodist annual conferences, the first hymn they sing at worship is and are we yet alive? 
But the hymn, as it appears in our hymnal, is missing stanza four. We've left out the last stanza. Jeffrey Moore, who's a student at Perkins School of Theology, says we've left out the most important verse, the most important stanza, the whole point of the hymn, the culmination. Critical to what Charles Wesley wanted to proclaim, and we've left it out, like leaving the toothbrush out of the hygiene kit or forgetting to water the plant, which is what I did for week after week. It's not just seeing each other's face as beautiful as we all are. That's not what he was talking about. So here's part of that last stanza. Jesus, to thee we bow and for thy coming wait. Give us for good some token now in our imperfect state. Give us some token now of what we're going to experience in that heavenly by and by. We want a taste of it now. In our hymnal, in verse 3, we ask this question, what troubles have we seen, what mighty conflicts past, fightings without, fears within since we assembled last? What are the obstacles we've overcome? But according to Jeffrey Moore, the point of the hymn is not that we've made it through another year, that we've survived the speed bumps, <laughs> that, we've, that we've made it through the detours, that we have, we, we're alive to see another day. That's not the point. Not just that we've made it through the grief and the sadness of this past year. It's really, says Moore, a prayer, a prayer that we would experience here and now Something of the peace and the strength and the hope that is the culmination of the Christian life. What Wesley calls sanctification or perfection. That we would taste it now and get some sense of it. That's what he wanted the Methodist preachers and the Methodist people to revel in when they come together. We're the community, the communion of saints and with us today is that cloud of witnesses hovering over us, dwelling among us, cheering us on. Perfection, sanctification, life, life. And so the scripture we heard this morning, from, first from Isaiah and then from the Gospel of John, offers up some ideas about what Life means, not in the biological sense, but in the sense intended in the word that in Greek is translated life, zoe, zoe. Now, if you were to open the Gospel of St. John and read several verses later, you would read that Jesus says, I lay down my life for the sheep. And if you were interested in the Greek, you'd see that the word translated in English, life, is actually a different word in that line. So, abundant life and the life Jesus lays down are not the same life. In Isaiah 40, we're promised comfort after some 150 years of exile, of oppression, of seeing their homes and their businesses and their communities and their temple trampled upon. These words written sometime early in the 5th century by the prophet speaks this word, enough. God is going to come through for you. God is going to come through for you. It's a promise of life for the community. Not so much, not so much biological comfort, not just their continued 
physical existence, but it's aimed at an inward certainty. Certain in the pervasive power of the Word. The divine Word. It's a word that, to quote Pete Seeger and Lee Hayes in their folk song in 1949, promises God is going to hammer out justice. God is going to hammer out truth. God is going to hammer out hope. God is going to hammer out life, pound life into the anvil of our hearts and our minds. It's not to say that physical comfort isn't important. I've had a kidney stone, and let me tell you something. Physical comfort matters. <laughs> it does. But it's more true to the biblical witness to say that physical comfort and also emotional comfort are intimately tethered to spiritual maturity, to our spiritual lives. Somehow, our comfort is dependent on the extent to which we deal with it. Life's pains and frustrations and disappointments and ultimately life's, the fact of our mortality. Sitting in the uh, doctor's office the other day, um, as I turned 65 and I had to have a memory test. How many of you have had this? Okay, so the doctor says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you three words. I want you to remember these three words. And the three words were red, chair, and I can't remember the third word. <laughs> I had to repeat those words after her. So I repeated the words. She says, don't forget those words. I said, I got them. I got them. Now she says, I want you to name all the animals you can name in one minute. And so I start. And I, she says, okay, time's up. And then she says, now I want you to draw a clock face. Draw it big enough so that you can write the numbers of the clock in. I did that. Now I should put the hands on the clock. Let's say 10 after 10. I did that. And then she said, now what are the three words? And I said, I don't have a clue. Well, no, I could remember red and chair, but for the life of me, I still can't remember the third word. And she didn't tell me either. She didn't tell me what it was. Then she said to me, well, in your everyday life, is, is lack of memory causing you problems? Like I would know. <laughs> I mean, think about that. <laughs> so my answer was, of course not. <laughs> of course it's not causing me problems. But coming to, oh, I can't wait. I hope they give me that test again because I want to remember that third word. Now, I was visiting with a, one of our congregants earlier this morning, and he said the trick is when they give you the three words, when you repeat the three words, repeat the third word first. So I've got a strategy. <laughs> if I can just remember it, I've got to remember that strategy. Yeah. Come to grips with with your life, with the fact that not in this way do I live forever. But we have our life, and now I'm quoting from a, an expository dictionary of the Bible. We have our life, quote, in the absolute sense, life as God has it. That which God has in God's self. That's the life Jesus is referring to. The life such as God has it. That's comfort. That's the divine intent. That's Zoe, life. Maybe a Christian Testament way of saying the same thing would be to say what St. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 2. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Or in Colossians, this amazing verse in Colossians chapter 3. Your life, your life is now hidden with God in Christ. I think about that every now and then when I tuck myself into my winter coat. <laughs> hidden with God in Christ. And then the way that Isaiah speaks of making the crooked way straight taking the mountains down and, and bringing the valleys up, preparing the way of the Lord. What is the next line that follows that? Isaiah says, all flesh is grass. You see the connection. To get the connection, you've got to be okay with 
your mortality. This isn't about you living forever the way you're living now, but living forever this life that God has and, and wants to instill in us. And again, this doesn't reduce the sanctity of life or it doesn't diminish the need for the relief from pain. That's, that's not the point. But it's to ensure that as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we keep things in perspective. That's what I need to remember. <laughs> Red chair and whatever that other thing was. I need to remember the life hidden in me. That's what we need to remember as a church, as a people following Jesus. My gosh. It's not where the capital is. It's where the Christ is in us. That's our comfort. As a church, first and foremost, our life, our existence, our ministry, our mission, our purpose, our reason for being is in Christ. It's in the divine. We do work for justice. We do strive for equal opportunity for all people. We do feed the hungry and visit the sick and tend to the brokenhearted. We do all those things. Because we know Christ is hidden in that. Not just for their own sake, but for the sake of Christ in us. Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked or in prison or sick? When did we see you? Well, whenever you saw the least. That's when you saw me. Hidden. God hidden in humanity. I mean, that's the Christian mystery. That's the message. That's the heart of of the story of the incarnation is that God now is hidden in our midst in full view. So comfort is not just a, a, matter, a matter of having enough food as important as that is. The comfort Isaiah speaks of is the faith that enables us to have peace in the horrible times. Zoe, life as Jesus means it. To have it abundantly. Their story is immortalized in the book and it became a movie. And this story was discovered by accident by John and Elizabeth Sherrill. They were actually writing a different book. And the book they were writing, the person they were writing about, uh, Brother Andrew, this other story kept popping up and, and so the Sherrills said, well, we really, we can't include that story in this story because that story is a story in and of itself. And so they said, we have to write that story. Maybe not that different from many other untold stories from the horrors of the Nazi regime. Heroes whose bravery is exceeded only by their faith and their faithfulness. After being discovered for hiding Jews, the entire family was in prison. The elderly father, who was 80 years old, at the time he died 10 days after his arrest. One of the nephews was arrested for his work in the Dutch underground. A brother would succumb to jaundice and illness contracted in the concentration camp. And the two sisters found themselves in the same prison. Ultimately, they were transferred together to Ravensbrück, which is described as a, quote, notorious woman's concentration camp. They were well into their middle years, Corey and Betsy. They were assigned to hard labor, a labor characterized as, quote, hellish conditions. The book and the movie are called The Hiding place, the hiding place. We're going to see just a brief clip. And in this clip, Corey has just learned that her sister Betsy, who was the physically the weaker of the two, has died. She's died in the concentration camp hospital. And 
And Corey struggles to retain something of her own hope, her own sense that, that life is worth it. Betsy has told her of a vision. I have a vision, Corey, that before the new year, you and I will both be free. You and I will both be free. So in this brief flashback, the moment when Corey is remembering something where Betsy bore witness to the presence of God. Adam, is it queued up? Let's watch. No pit is so deep that he is not deeper still. They will believe us because we were here. Betsy talked about heaven like she had already been there. Yeah. No one would wish her back. Read for Betsy. Read for all of us. Oh. No pit is so deep, but that he isn't deeper still. We must tell them because they will believe us as we've been here. <laughs> This is not a fiction. If you haven't seen the movie or read the book, I commend it to you. Because it's a book about life. To life. To life. I watch this movie, I read this book, and I hear those words resound through it. We must bear witness. Because We've been here. We've been to hell. <laughs> We've been to hell. And we haven't lost it. In Christ, we're still alive. That's what Charles Wesley meant. And are we yet alive and see each other's face? And so, Betsy Ten Boom She had gotten that token, Jesus. Jesus, to thee we bow, and for thy coming wait. Give us for good some token now, in our imperfect state. No, we're not satisfied to survive. We're not concerned or interested in revival. We want to live. And that's what we celebrate at this time of year. Let us pray. Often, Lord, we thank you for bringing us through seeing us through the difficult times. But the greater miracle, the mystery that we cling to, is not that we've made it through, but that we are alive, that love lives, and hope lives, and faith lives, because your Spirit lives in us. And we might pray, for protection and for strength to be delivered from the times of trial. 
But the better prayer is to pray that we would know you and this abundant life that you have come to give us so that when memory fades and bodies fail, still in our hearts there will be rejoicing. Jesus, hidden in us, Christ, each of us hidden in you. Amen. We continue our worship now with these prayers offered up. I see this clip from this amazing story, and for me it feels like a heritage piece. I've told the story before of my own grandparents' experience in occupied Holland, so the first prayer that I lift up is for all the heroes, both sung and unsung. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up prayers for Les Parker and Annie Parker as they deal with medical problems. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the loved ones of Reverend Bob Huell, Holstrunk, thank you, who passed away this week for comfort and peace for those he has left behind. He was a minister here years ago. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up prayers for those who've been affected by the wildfires in Southern California, those who've been displaced and for the firefighters. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up prayers for two people who are facing major eye surgery, prayers for healing and comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for healing during the grieving time in the Purvy family, especially for two of the young people. Lord, in your mercy. And a prayer of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for prayers offered and that the surgery was a success for someone whom we have prayed for. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for all of our youth, especially those who wrestle with depression and anxiety. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, beloved God, no pit is so deep that you are not deeper still. Thank you. Thank you for being in the midst of all of it with all of us. And we pray all of this praying for some token of the life to come. We pray using the words taught to us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. At this time, we invite the ushers forward to collect our morning offering. This is a time where we give, and we invite you to give joyfully. This is one of our spiritual practices of giving generously. And we do so in order to support the least of these in our midst so that we can continue to feed people Sunday nights, so we can clothe people through the thrift shop, so we can be there for the stranger, for the youth, for those who need our support. Let us now joyfully bring our gifts to God, and as we do so, we will sing, Christ is the world's light. Let us bring our gifts to God.
There are so many ways, Lord, to say glory to God in the highest, in a Christmas carol, in a hymn, in the silence of our hearts, with um, a humble but determined faith in the midst of the most horrific times to lean toward love and forgiveness for all that we do here, for all that you do in us, for us and through us. Help us never lose sight of the light. Help us never forget the life that Jesus offers to us. And may we walk as people of light. And even in the darkest times, when we struggle to find a glimmer of hope or joy, don't let us forget that we have abundant life hidden in us and us hidden in Christ. Bless the offering that we bring forward. Let it be used to bring light, yes, and comfort to our neighbors. We offer these gifts to you in the name and in the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I have one announcement, and then I'll turn it over to Rachel. Last Sunday, after church, Staff Parish Relations Committee voted unanimously to affirm Lydia Marchese, who I know is, is she downstairs? She, I think she, she stayed down with the children. Okay, she's with the children. Sunday's All right, I, I saw her here earlier. Um, to affirm her as a, a candidate, excuse me, a candidate for ministry. And so um, she will be starting seminary. She's already been accepted to one seminary, to Wesley, in Washington, D.C. I know she's applied to, to Boston University. I think she's applied to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and a couple others. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, but we celebrate this with her. Our church, our, our staff parish relations committee met with her a couple of times. She's been in our midst for the last three and a half years. It'll be four years by the time she gets done. And so... Um, we share that news with you this morning to celebrate with us, and it may be, I have to check to see if I need to call a special church conference because Staff Parish has to make that recommendation to our church conference. Whether the church conference has to do it or, or church council can do it, I don't know. These are details, some of which can really drain the life right out of you, but I am determined to forge ahead and to remain joyful and, and figure out the details. So I, but I, I, I celebrate. So. If she were here, I'd have her stand up and we would give her a huge round of applause. Yeah. Uh, I know that there are a few people who have announcements. Uh, let me make a few and then I will invite them to come up. Um, so right after church today, there is a Christmas pageant rehearsal. Um, Adam is going to be leading Christmas pageant rehearsal in here. I'm going to be downstairs in the rainbow room uh, for the college brunch. I haven't actually seen Rob and Margie Gibson, but I assume they're around somewhere making sure we will be well fed because, boy, they feed us well for the college brunches. So if you're in college or in that general vicinity, I'm not going to card you. You're welcome to come down. It will be a really good meal. It is every single month. So join us down, uh, downstairs in the Rainbow Room, which is like right below there. Uh, if you need directions, ask someone. Um, the Christmas pageant is next week. There was going to be a potluck following it. There is not going to be a potluck following it. Um, I didn't have somebody who wanted to run a potluck. I asked a few people. Nobody, you know what? It's a busy season. I get that. Um, I also heard some relief from people who are like, oh, good. I don't have to make another meal. <laughs> so we're just going to have a Christmas pageant next week, and then you can go home and eat lunch on your own, and that'll be okay. Or go to brunch with some friends. That'd be pretty cool, too. Um, Let's see, what else do I have? I've got a pile of them. Um, on Thursday, there's a new devotional uh, group that is meeting. Uh, I think Liz is organizing that. Uh, it's usually at 8, but this week it's going to be at 7.30. So just a note, to arrive at 7.30 this Thursday if you're going to come uh, and be a part of that. But in the future, 8, eight o'clock uh, in the morning on, on Thursdays. Come, and that's down in the chapel. In the rainbow room. In the rainbow Also right below there. Ask somebody for directions if you need it. Uh, the feasibility research team will hopefully be getting some proposals uh, tomorrow. We actually know that one is coming in, so we're anticipating uh, one for certain, uh, but we think there are going to be a couple others out there. 
Um, so please, please, please hold us in prayer this week. Uh, if you can just take a moment in the mornings or in the afternoons or before you go to bed just to lift up this team in prayer. That would be terrific. This is a great week for that. There's also a prayer group, I think, that happens after church today in the Reed Booth Room, I believe. If you want to join in prayer with the prayer group, you can find them there. I'm almost done, I swear, Adam. Um, what else do I have? Oh, I think just one other thing. Next Sunday after, uh, in the evening, is going to be the second Taze worship service, our monthly Taze worship service on the third Sunday. So next Sunday at 6.30 p.m., uh, there'll be another Taze service. Okay, Adam, and then I think Catherine, and I think that's, oh, and Pat. Okay, I've got three more people, so go for it, Adam. Yeah, uh, just two quick announcements. One, I uh, just want to let you know that there is going to be a concert here at the church Friday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, Peter Griggs will be here playing uh, a Christmas concert, an old English Christmas. Uh, he's a guitar player. He's also brought his old English loud, which is a, which is a weirder kind of guitar, and it's going to be a pretty cool concert, and I just wanted to get some church representation um, at that because I'd love to have more events and bring the community into this space because I think it's a great space and I want to have successful events here so that people feel like this is a place where things happen. And speaking of things happening, a week from Friday, the 22nd, we're going to be Christmas caroling on the lawn and everyone's invited. I already told the choir, but everyone is invited. Uh, we're going to give out Christmas cookies and hot chocolate and invite people to our Christmas Eve service. So that's Friday, the 22nd. We're going to start singing about 11.30, and we're going to go until either we get too cold, we get too tired, the cookies run out, or the, we'll just stop. Probably, certainly before 1 o'clock, we'll be done. But just over the lunchtime, uh, the lunchtime hour. So please come and sing with us. So earlier this morning, you heard, or you watched Mark and the kids put together a hygiene kit. Just a reminder, we are putting together hygiene kits over the Advent season. If you need a list of what goes into one of the kits, there are lists, lists available at the back of the sanctuary. You can pick one up as you get your cup of coffee after the service. Um, UMW is putting together a kit, so if you would like to buy a large number of a certain type of item, they would happily welcome your donation. You can pick up a slip as a reminder. If you'd like to buy 10 sets of nail clippers or hand towels or some such thing, you can help with that effort. I grew up in a church that was involved with UMCOR, and I had some opportunities to volunteer myself while I was in college, and so I'm really excited that we are able to put together the kits, and I hope that we are able to put together quite a few. If you have one that you are ready to drop off, you can put it underneath the tree at the back. It, in previous years, it's been a mitten tree. This year, it's an UMCOR tree, and we're looking to collect some kits to go underneath it and have a happy Christmas for UMCOR. And Barb, excellent. Good, good, good. So many opportunities to give and so busy a season. But I just wanted to remind us how our church over 30 years ago was part of initiating the organization right next, that's next door in the uh, Congregational Church, JUMP, Joint Urban Ministry Project. At this point, only Barb and I and shy Sue Bowley back there, stand up, Sue, are, the, are, are our only folks that go over there and volunteer. And it's so, so worthwhile. No, don't go on that. We want more volunteers. So, but at Christmas time, we're, we have a fundraiser for JUMP. Sadly, our church, which used to, I think, give $10,000 a year, has cut back on that donation, too. So it's really a necessary, needed thing in our community. It's a walk-in help center and, and hospitality and listening to stories. It's, we get more out of it, I think, than they do. But this year, we're selling soup. You've seen that in the past, probably. You just add a few ingredients, the recipe's there. The soup is, the suggested price is $10. Also, greeting cards. And we have cards this year that were made by a, a disabled veteran who is one of our clients. There are eight cards in a packet, and they're $10. Also, cards that Todd Van Allen, remember him? We still have Todd's cards back there to sell. Eight in a packet for 10 There are also um, gift and giving cards. 
which are not blank inside as the others. I'm, oh, I'm really screwing up the microphone, I think. But a card that says, and you may donate any amount you'd like, uh, that a gift in, has been given in your name and give this to someone in memory or in honor of. So <laughs> if you want to find out more about JUMP, Barb or me or Sue Bowley back there, we'll be happy to tell you. And we'll be in the narthex with our stuff. Thank you so much. And if I understand correctly, there's also another uh, event this week. UMW is having a cookie swap. Is it, can somebody from UMW get Wednesday? 6.30 on and Wednesday night, there's a cookie swap. If you want to, you bring some cookies and then you swap them. Is that just basically the gist of it? Do, am I missing any basic details? Oh, and we're accepting um, UMCOR um, gift. Yeah. Great. We're, and, oh, and, they'll, and you'll be putting together some packets, too, if you give bits and pieces. So lots of good things going on. We could go on and on and on and on. We actually have gone on and on a fair bit this morning already. So we're going to wrap that up and move to our closing hymn. But it's really cool to see all the different things that are happening uh, with the people in our congregation. So with that, let us go to our closing hymn. You know this. It's Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let us sing it with the joy that the angels brought to us. It's on page 240. The words are also on the screen. Let us sing. Friends, let us go from this place out into the world, taking new life wherever we may be, and remembering that God is with us no matter where we are. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace with one another this day.